Pyotr Stolopin. Pyotr Arkadyevich Stolopin, Russian, April 14, OS April 2, 1862. September 18, OS September 5, 1911, was a Russian statesman who served as the third prime. Minister and the Interior Minister of the Russian Empire from 1906 until his assassination in 1911. Known as the greatest reformer of Russian society and economy, his reforms caused unprecedented growth of the Russian state, which was halted by his assassination. Born in Dresden, Kingdom of Saxony, to a prominent Russian aristocratic family, Stolopin became involved in government from his early 20s. His successes in public service led to rapid promotions culminating in his appointment as interior minister under Prime Minister Ivan Gormykin in April. 1906, in July, Gormykin resigned and was succeeded as Prime Minister by Stolopin. As Prime Minister, Stolopin initiated major agrarian reforms, known as the Stolopin Reform, that granted the right of private land ownership to the peasantry. His tenure was also marked by Increased revolutionary unrest, to which he responded with a new system of martial law that allowed for the arrest, speedy trial, and execution of accused offenders. After numerous previous assassination attempts, Stolopin was fatally shot in September 1911 by revolutionary Dmitry Bogrov in Kiev. Stolopin was a monarchist and hoped to strengthen the throne by modernizing the rural Russian economy. Modernity and efficiency, rather than democracy, were his goals. He argued that the land question could only be resolved and revolution averted when the peasant commune was abolished. And a stable landowning class of peasants, the Kalaks, would have a stake in the status quo. His Successes and failures have been the subject of heated controversy among scholars, who agree he was one of the last major statesmen of Imperial Russia with cogent and forceful public reform. Policies Early life and career Stolopin was born at Dresden in the Kingdom of Saxony, on April 14, 1862, and was baptized on 24. May in the Russian Orthodox Church in that city. His father, Arkady Dmitrievich Stolopin, 1821-99, was a Russian envoy at the time. Stolopin's family was prominent in the Russian aristocracy, his forebears having served the Tsars. Since the 16th century, and as a reward for their service had accumulated huge estates in several provinces. His father Arkady Dmitrievich Stolopin, 1821-99, was a general in the Russian artillery. The governor of Eastern Rumelia and commandant of the Kremlin Palace Guard. Twice. His second wife, Natalia Mykolovna Stolopina, née Gorchikova, 1827-89, was the daughter of Prince Mikhail Dmitrievich Garchakov, the commanding general of the Russian infantry during the Crimean War and later the Viceroy of Congress Poland. Pyotr grew up on the family estate Serednikovo, Russian, in Solnechnogorsky district, once inhabited by Mikhail Lermontov, near Moscow Governorate. In 1879 the family moved to Oriol. Stolopin and his brother Alexander studied at the Oriol Boys College where he was described by his teacher, B. Fedorova, as standing out among his peers for his rationalism and character. In 1881 Stolopin studied agriculture at St. Petersburg University where one of his teachers was Dmitry Mendeleev. He entered government service upon graduating in 1885, writing his thesis on tobacco growing in the south of Russia. It is unclear if he joined the Ministry of State Property or Internal Affairs. In 1884, 
Stolopin married Olga Borisovna von Neidhart whose family was of a similar standing to Stolopins. They married whilst Stolopin was still a student, an uncommon occurrence at the time. The marriage began in tragic circumstances, Olga had been engaged to Stolopin's brother, Mikhail, who died in a duel. The marriage was a happy one, devoid of scandal. The couple had five daughters and one son. Lithuania Stolopin spent much of his life and career in Lithuania, then administratively known as Northwestern. Cry of the Russian Empire From 1869, Stolopin spent his childhood years in Kaunabur's Manor, now Kadiniai. District of Lithuania, built by his father, a place that remained his favorite residence for the rest of Life, 7. In 1876, the Stolopin family moved to Vilna, now Vilnius, where he attended grammar school. Stolopin served as Marshal of the Kovna Governorate, now Kaunas, Lithuania, between 1889 and 1902. This public service gave him an inside view of local needs and allowed him to develop administrative skills. His thinking was influenced by the single-family farmstead system of the Northwestern Cry, and he later sought to introduce the land reform based on private ownership. Throughout the Russian Empire, Stolopin's service in Kovna was deemed a success by the Russian government. He was promoted seven times, culminating in his promotion to the rank of state councillor in 1901. Four of his Daughters were also born during this period, his daughter Maria recalled, this was the most calm period of his life. In May 1902 Stolopin was appointed governor in Grodno Governorate, where he was the youngest person ever appointed to this position. Governor of Saratov In February 1903, he became governor of Saratov. Stolopin is known for suppressing strikers and peasant unrest in January 1905. According to Orlando Figs, its peasants were among the poorest and most rebellious in the whole of the country. It seems he cooperated with the Zemstvos, the local government. He gained a reputation as the only governor able to keep a firm hold on his province. During the revolution of 1905, a period of widespread revolt, the roots of unrest lay partly in the emancipation reform of 1861, which had given land to the Obshchina, instead of individually to the newly freed serfs. Stolopin was the first governor to use effective police methods. Some sources suggest that he had a police record on every adult male in his province. Interior Minister and Prime Minister See also, Pyotr Stolopin's Cabinet Stolopin's successes as provincial governor led to his appointment as Interior Minister under Ivan Gormaikin in April 1906. He advocated for a new track of the Trans-Siberian Railway along the Russian side of the Amur River. The absent-minded Gormaikin had been described by his predecessor Sergei Witt as a bureaucratic nonentity. After two months, Dmitry Fyodorovich Trapov suggested Gormaikin step down and conducted secret negotiations with Pavel Moyukov, who proposed a cabinet of only cadets, which Trapov believed would fall afoul of Tsar Nicholas II. Trapov opposed Stolopin, who promoted a coalition cabinet. Georgi Lvov and Alexander Guchkov tried to convince the Tsar to accept liberals in the new government. When Gormaikin resigned on July 21, OS July 8, 1906, Nicholas II appointed Stolopin as prime minister, while remaining as minister of the interior. He dissolved the Duma, despite the reluctance of some of its more radical members, to clear the field for cooperation with the new government. In 
Response, 120 cadet and 80 Trudovic and Social Democrat deputies went to Viborg, then under the Autonomous Grand Duchy of Finland, beyond the reach of Russian police, and responded with The Viborg Manifesto, or the Viborg Appeal, written by Pavel Milyukov. Stolopin allowed the Signers to return to the capital unmolested. On August 25, 1906, three assassins from the Union of Socialist Revolutionaries Maximalists wearing military uniforms, bombed a public reception Stolopin was holding at Acha on Aptekarsky Island. Stolopin was only slightly injured by flying splinters, but 28 others were killed. Stolopin's 15-year-old daughter lost both legs and later succumbed to her injuries at the hospital, and his three-year-old son Arkady broke a leg, as the two stood on a balcony. Stolopin moved into the Winter Palace. In October 1906, at the request of the Tsar, Grigory Rasputin paid a visit to the wounded child. On November 9th an imperial decree made far-reaching changes in land tenure law, disrupting in one sweep the communal and the household, family, property systems. Stolopin changed the rules of the first Duma to attempt to make it more amenable to government. Proposals On June 8, 1907, Stolopin dissolved the second Duma and 15 cadets who had associated with terrorists were arrested, he also changed the weight of votes in favor of the nobility and wealthy, reducing the value of lower-class votes. The leading cadets were ineligible. This affected the elections to the Third Duma, which returned much more conservative members eager to cooperate with the government. This changed Georgi Lvov from a moderate liberal into a radical Distribution of newly formed farms in Grodno Governor 8, 1909. As governor in Saratov, Stolopin had become convinced that the open field system had to be abolished, communal land tenure had to go. The chief obstacle appeared to be the mere commune. So its dissolution and the individualization of peasant land ownership became the leading objectives. Of his agrarian policy he introduced land Denmark-style reforms to allay peasant grievances and suit dissent. Stolopin proposed his own landlord-sided reform in opposition to the previous democratic proposals which led to the dissolution of the first two Russian parliaments. Stolopin's reforms aimed to stem peasant unrest by creating a class of market-oriented smallholders who would support the social order. He was assisted by Alexander Krivoshine, who in 1908 became Minister of Agriculture. In June 1908 Stolopin lived in a wing of the Yelagin Palace where the Council of Ministers convened. Supported by the Peasants' Land Bank, credit cooperatives proliferated from 1908 and Russian. Industry was booming. Stolopin tried to improve the lives of urban laborers and work towards increasing the power of local governments, but the Zemstvos adopted an attitude hostile to the government. Leo Tolstoy was particularly indignant, writing to Stolopin, stop your horrible activity. Enough of looking up to Europe, it is high time Russia knew its own mind. Tolstoy had argued similarly. To Dostoyevsky, who was in favor of private ownership of land and wrote, if you want to transform humanity for the better, to turn almost beasts into humans, give them land and you will reach your goal. In his nationalities policy, Stolopin attempted to improve the acrimonious relations between the Russian Orthodox majority and the Jewish population. In 1910, Stolopin's brother-in-law Sergei Sazanov became Minister of Foreign Affairs, replacing Count Alexander Izvolsky. Around 1910 the 
press started a campaign against Rasputin, accusing him of improper sexual relations. Stolopin wanted to ban Rasputin from the capital and threatened to prosecute him as a sectarian, Rasputin. Decamped to Jerusalem, returning to St. Petersburg only after Stolopin's death. On June 14, 1910, Stolopin's land reforms came before the Duma as a formal law, including a proposal to spread the Zemstvo system to the southwestern provinces of Asian Russia. Though the law seemed likely to pass, Stolopin's political opponents narrowly defeated it. In March 1911 Stolopin resigned from the fractious and chaotic Duma after the failure of his land reform bill. Tsar Nicholas II decided to look for a successor to Stolopin and considered Sergei Witt, Vladimir Kokovtsov and Alexei Kvostov. The Moscow Times has summarized his career. Pyotr Stolopin's reforms produced astounding results within a few years. Between 1906 and 1915, thanks to the efforts of Stolopin's farmers, the productivity of crops nationwide grew by 14%, in Siberia by 25%. In 1912, Russia's grain exports exceeded by 30% those of Argentina. The United States and Canada combined. Assassination Stolopin traveled to Kiev despite police warnings of an assassination plot, as there had already been 10 attempts to kill him. On September 14, OS September 1, 1911, Stolopin attended a performance of Rimsky-Korsakov's The Tale of Tsar Saltan at the Kiev Opera in the presence of the Tsar and his eldest daughters, Grand Duchesses Olga and Tatiana. The theater was guarded by 90 men inside the building. According to Alexander Spiridovich, after the second act, Stolopin was standing in front of the ramp separating the parterre from the orchestra, his back to the stage. On his right were Baron Friedrichs and General Sukomlinov. His personal bodyguard had stepped out to smoke. Stolopin was shot twice, once in the arm and once in the chest, by Dmitry Bogrov, a Jewish leftist. Revolutionary. Bogrov ran to one of the entrances and was caught. Stolopin rose from his chair, removed his gloves and unbuttoned his jacket, exposing a blood-soaked waistcoat. He gave a gesture to tell the Tsar to go back and made the sign of the cross. He remained conscious, but his condition deteriorated. He died four days later. Grov was hanged ten days after the assassination. The judicial investigation was halted by order of the Tsar, giving rise to suggestions that the assassination was planned not by leftists, but by conservative monarchists opposed to Stolopin's reforms and his influence on the Tsar. However, this has never been proven. On his request, Stolopin was buried in the city where he was murdered. 10. Legacy See also, 1905 Russian Revolution, October Manifesto, and State Duma, Russian Empire. Since 1905 Russia had been plagued by widespread political dissatisfaction and revolutionary unrest. With broad support, leftist organizations waged a violent campaign against the autocracy. Throughout Russia, many police officials and bureaucrats were assassinated. Stolopin inspected rebellious areas unarmed and without bodyguards. During one of these trips, somebody dropped a bomb under his feet. There were casualties, but Stolopin survived to respond to these attacks. Stolopin introduced a new court system of martial law that allowed for the arrest and speedy trial of accused offenders. Over 3,000, possibly 5,500, suspects were convicted and executed by these special courts between 1906 and 1909. 
The Duma session on November 17, 1907, Cadet Party. Member Fedor Radachev, R.U., referred to the gallows as Stolopin's efficient Black Monday necktie. Outraged, Stolopin challenged Radachev to a duel, but Radachev apologized to avert it. Nevertheless, the expression became popular. The capacious railroad cars used for Siberian resettlement were Named Stolopin Cars Opinion is divided on Stolopin's legacy, and historians disagree over how realistic Stolopin's policies were. Some approve of his firm hand to suppress revolt and anarchy in the unruly atmosphere after the 1905 revolution. There remains doubt whether, even without the disruption of Stolopin's murder and the First World War, his agricultural policy would have succeeded. The deep conservatism from the mass of peasants made them slow to respond. In 1914 the strip system was still widespread, with only around 10% of the land having been consolidated into farms. Most peasants were unwilling to leave. The security of the commune for the uncertainty of individual farming. Furthermore, by 1913, the government's own Ministry of Agriculture had itself begun to lose confidence in the policy. Nevertheless, Krivoshine became the most powerful figure in the imperial government. Some have also argued that Stolopin was correct to wager on the strong class of successful peasant. Farmers, evidence from tax returns supports this, showing a significant minority of peasants paying. Increasing taxes from the 1890s, a sign of higher productivity. Lenin in the Paris newspaper, Social Democrat, on October 31, 1911, wrote Stolopin in the Revolution, calling for the mortification of the uber lyncher, saying, Stolopin tried to pour new wine into old bottles, to reshape the old autocracy into a bourgeois monarchy, and the failure of Stolopin's. Policy is the failure of Tsarism on this last, the last conceivable, road for Tsarism. In Name of Russia, a 2008 television poll to select the greatest Russian, Stolopin placed second, behind Alexander Nevsky and followed by Joseph Stalin. He is seen by his admirers as the greatest statesman Russia ever had, the one who could have saved the country from revolution and the civil war. On December 27, 2012, monument to Pyotr Stolopin was unveiled in Moscow to mark the 150th anniversary of his birth. The monument is situated near the Russian White House, seat of the Russian cabinet. At the foot of the pedestal, a bronze plaque quotes Stolopin, we must all unite in defense of Russia, coordinate our efforts, our duties, and our rights in order to maintain one of Russia's historic supreme rights to be strong. Screen portrayals Stolopin is portrayed in the opening scenes of the 1971 British film Nicholas and Alexandra. Ictitiously taking part in the Romanov dynasty tercentenary celebrations of 1913 before being assassinated later in the film, two years after his actual assassination.